welcome. I will just be showing some quick brief walkthrough of what I've done to make some game changes. So the game is no longer untitled. We have decided on the name Fame of the Collector and it is going to be a horror game. So as you can see I removed the wall that's here and I also removed the two walls that were here and here. And the player start is just over here now. So you just buy them. So if I press play just in this one, you'll notice a few subtle things. Don't mind the fan sound from the laptop, it's completely normal. Okay, so this gun is solely here for testing purposes, but shoot, but you can jump, move around, look around, and left click is, of course, the reaction of sorts. And then a ramp, as we will be having stairs as well. So you probably notice this small menu as well, but try not to be too alarmed. If I just go to desktop, I'll just show you. So I'll open the main menu world first. So in the main menu world, I open the level blueprint and I've just created this base blueprint. So on event begin play, it creates a main menu widget, adds to viewport, sets the input game mode, shows the mouse and gets the player's controller. Right, simple enough. But if we go over to UI, we have this base UI. This is just a testing UI to, for the visual display to try and get working. And as we go across, you notice these different fonts. So played around with some Cafe Francis fonts, some Who Are Satan font, as well as some other additional font, a blood font. So. We have our controls menu first, which has go back, main menu, options, and all of the different controls that you can have access to. So, options is simple. In options, if it's valid, adds to viewport. If it's not valid, it creates the option menu widget and sets it, adds to viewport. So it has the options menu reference, pretty simple. And then as we go over to the go back button, which is just this little button up here, that of course will go back, previous step. And then main menu of course opens up main menu world, which spawns in the main menu. So now I'll show the main menu. So we have a little achievements button which will be getting worked on. We have continue, new game, controls, options, quick game. So when you click quick game, this box opens up, gives you a yes or no function. So I'll show the code briefly for that. Quick game creates a flip flop, which makes the selection box visible or not visible. And going on the lines of that with the yes and no selection, yes will quit the game, no will hide the box again. And then as we go on, so Resume and New Game, they're the same at the moment. So opens the first person map, sets the input mode, doesn't show mouse cursor and gets the player controller. The exact same for New Game. <clears throat> but as I go down, we have our options. So with options, if it's valid, it adds to viewport. The exact same as this one. So. I don't really need to explain that again because it's the exact same thing. And then controls menu, it it's very similar. So it creates the reference and if it's valid, then it creates controls menu. So while I'm here, I might actually just add this in. So just the controls menu ref because it'll help it run a bit cleaner. <clears throat> so with our settings and everything as well, if we go into input, you can see we have sprint, crouch, jump, flashlight, left peak, right peak, reload, heal, 
pause menu. So that's what we want to get running for our action maps. Then our axis maps, we got our Hori, Verdi, View Hori, View Verdi. And that's about it for that. So now I move on to the options menu. So we have go back, main menu, controls. So they're all pretty relatively reasonable. Then we have our screen resolutions, anti-aliasing, shadow quality, screen mode, and view distance. So this is where it gets a bit more technical. Main menu, go back, they're fine. And then anti-aliasing, we've had to enable console commands. So it executes a console command to change certain functions within the game. And that's the same with a resolution. So for the anti-aliasing, you'd go r.postprocessaa quality. And with screen resolution, you go r.setres, space, and then whatever resolution you want to use. So I have 720 by 480, 1280 by 720, 1920 by 1080, and 2560 by 1440. And then with view distance, this changes how far you can see. So it's just R dot view distance scale space 0.4. Then our window mode is slightly different. So it gets the game user settings, sets full screen mode to full screen windowed or windowed full screen, and then just applies the resolution settings. And then the controls menu, exact same as earlier. But then as we go on to our shadow quality, so it's sg.shadowquality0123, so forth. Pretty simple. And this is all it looks like. So these images for <coughs> each one as well, they're all custom made images for this project. So now the final thing that I've done for the moment is just setting up some base controls. So this is just the old code which I'm not going to use because this is the code that came with the BP first person character. However, I've set up pause selection. So it has pause menu. If it's valid, then it creates a branch. If the branch is true, remove set game paused. So yeah, it has quite a lot of adjustments as you can see if it's not valid pause menu widget it sets pause menu widget but it all goes to branch verifies whether the game is paused or not gets the player's controller shows cursor doesn't show cursor so it varies we'll also be setting up a interact um, we have left right up and down so that's just moving left, right, backwards and forwards. Uh, jumping slash double jumping. So when pressed, you jump. When released, you stop jumping. Pretty simple. And then sprinting function. I do have to adjust the sprinting function as it's currently not working because I have not set it up properly yet. Then we have our left and right look X, Y, or up and down. So up and down is of course your yaw and then left and right is your pitch so don't need to worry about roll and then with the strafing you have your left peak and you have your right peak so pretty simple then as I go across a bit more we set up a flashlight so the flashlight has a flip flop func function if it's pressed then the flashlight turns on and if it's not pressed then <coughs> of course the flashlight turns off so I'll just press play to show you a basis with it it might run a bit slow on this computer but I can still show so I'll just go into the options first and I'll go 1920 by 1080 so you can see this is full screen um, go back I can click continue because it will be the same thing. So it's just this map, same as before. But I'll just show you. So F for flashlight. We've got to adjust the strafing as well. 
as I haven't fully set that up properly yet. But we do have a pretty flashlight. I feel like that flashlight is enough. You press escape and you go into pause. You can restart. Put you in the same spot. So if I go over here and then restart, I'm back here. But I'll show you that it actually does work. So if I go there and then click resume, see, it's fine. So now we go into the options, you can see it goes back, we go controls, options, controls, we can just switch between the two, main menu, and we can go controls from here, continue. So it is all relatively working, you can go main menu, and then you can go quick game, yes. So that is about it for now.